Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Blender Developer Sneak Peek series. My name is Thomas Beck and I hope that you had wonderful Christmas days. For all of you that were wondering where I was hiding during the last few months, I finished the most comprehensive German Blender book ever written. It contains more than 776 pages of pure Blender knowledge and is full of Blender joy. There was so much going on lately in Blender, even though the version 2.73 is internally more or less a bug fixing release, that I bring you three new sneak peeks over the next two weeks. The first one, that one you're watching right now, is about general features, cycles, and a whole lot about the new grease pencil feature. Let's now start with the general improvements. For the first feature, I fired up Blender 2.73 Release Candidate 1, as you can see here, and it's going about the um, rename Render Slot feature. When you render an image and you'd like to compare it with, an, uh, with another image, then you have those render slots, as you already know. The render slots 2 is uh, empty at the moment, and if you render again via F12, and let's um, change the material that you, so that you can see the difference. And you can see that you could easily switch between slot 1 and slot 2 by uh, selecting those slots or by hitting J, like this. Um, but the problem is that you don't know which uh, version you have in slot 1 and which version of your render is in slot 2. And in the end panel, when you hit N, it is uh, opened up. Um, there is a new slot name um, text edit field here. And with this text edit field, you could easily um, rename this slot. And so we could uh, rename slot 2 to, for example, my new slot name and you'll see that it is immediately changed and every other slot can be renamed too like slot like awesome slot one and as you can see that eases up uh, uh, the selection of these slots very much the next uh, feature is here um, as well. And when you uh, select the render border in the camera view via control B, then you always have to switch to the camera view in uh, before you can select them like this. And then you would um, you would easily disable it here again. But when you are in the render viewport, then oftentimes you are much clearer about what you'd like to render and what not. So you can now easily press Ctrl and B in the rendered view and select which parts of the image should be rendered and then hit F12 again and it will be rendered. So that's the easy selection in the render view. The third and last feature in this section is now how Blender autosaves files. To show you this uh, feature, I already saved my file and I'd like to set the timer in min min minutes to dot five. I don't know if that works. Okay, to one. And then I wait a bit and come back to you when Blender saves the file so I can show you how the new file naming scheme is in Blender done. And here we are again. Blender saved now my file. This is my file name, my sample file. And you see that the autosave file is named my sample file minus and then those four uh, numbers. And this, those numbers are the process ID of Blender. So when you've got several Blender versions open, then every process ID is different. And so the autosave file doesn't override itself. And that is the new scheme and I think that's very helpful for people that are rendering with multiple versions of Blender at the same time. So keep that in mind if you got auto autosaved files. With those three features done, let's now come to the cycle section. 
For this, I prepared a simple scene. This one is only a volume scattering material, a cube with a volume scattering material. The density is 0 0.3 and we got an emitter, a very small emitter down there that is pink and that got an emitting strength of 3. We got our camera outside the volume and when we render this, then you'll see that it is rendering perfectly. And in previous versions, when you moved your camera like this inside the volume, like this, then you only had a black screen because then I wasn't able to determine if the camera, if the, uh, it, it was able to determine if the camera is inside the volume or outside, but it couldn't render it. In the new version, as you can see here, this is no problem anymore. You can now move your camera inside or outside your volume and have a perfectly fine rendering result as you would wish. Apart from the volumetric rendering improvements, it's now possible to have specular colors in the cycle viewport. So let's just recall how it's done in the renderer. When you got your Suzanne mesh here and it's subdivided three times now and smooth shaded, then you can see those specular highlights here. When you uh, create a new material, this one is the default material, when you create a new one, then you see the specularity is increased because this intensity slider is different. And um, before we implemented it for cycles, in cycles it looked always like this. Um, when you switch now to cycles and you use, uh, you create a new material, then you have something here under settings and under settings there is a viewport specular. So let's just change the color to an orange and you see the specularity changing in the viewport immediately. And if you change the hardness here, then you see that's updated in real time. Let's now come to another slightly hidden feature. I prepared this simple scene with a sphere, a cube and Suzanne and a lamp in it. This lamp has a new per parameter and this parameter is max bounces. Every lamp type has it and that defines how, um, how often the light bounces will contribute to the rendering result. To make that visible I pre-rendered those, uh, those elements already and I'll sh I'd like to show you those in the, um, view, in the uh, render view here. As you can see here, I renamed this slots already. So here you get an, a pretty good example why this renaming is pretty nice. And this one is the one bounce version where I set the max bounces to one. And I think that you can see that there is beneath this sphere slightly green tint and there is almost no or orange tint from Suzanne but when we compare that to the 1024 bounces then you see immediately how this changes when I switch between them via J and you see there is much more light contributing to the result and the rendering time is slightly different. For seconds that is almost 10% in this scene. So you could speed up your low res renderer uh, renderings with this max bounces a lot and when you don't need them you could lower them so your rendering is much faster. Apart from that the uh, new GeForce uh, GTX 9XX so 970, 960 and so on is now supported uh, in cycles so you could use your fancy new cards with it. With that said I'd like to go to the grease pencil improvements that are really huge and a great addition by Allegorith. I don't know how your feelings were about it but I was always so annoyed when I used the grease pencil and this one is Blender 2.71 and I used it and drew, drew, drew something in there 
and then I selected another object and everything was gone. So I was always very annoyed and tried to attach it to the scene. And Joshua, as he rewrote the complete grease pencil UI and everything behind it, was um, tackling this issue too. So in the new version, when you draw something with the crease pencil, then select a new one, a new object, then you see it's automatically attached to the scene and not to the um, object. There is this small um, box for it, this small selection box for it, so you could easily attach it to the object too by selecting this crease pencil and erasing it from the scene. So now you got the old behavior again. But in my case, I really hated that this feature and so I'll keep it scene attached always. Apart from that, the UI was really changed a lot. So we now have volumetric strokes. That's a new feature. And when you enable that, then you'll see that those are volumes. Those are points that are volumetric. And if you change this color, then maybe it will be a bit better visible how those strokes are formed, like simple dots, but they are three-dimensional. And apart from that, when you disable volume now, we got a new filling option too. When you enable that, then you will see that it fills the outline of the drawn stroke. Um, this only works for um, convex shapes. So if your shape is concave or something like uh, Pac-Man, for example, let's just draw one. Then you'll see that his mouth is drawn through. So uh, keep in mind that this is for convex shapes and all will be good. Apart from that, we have now the possibility to color our onion skinning strokes. Uh, when you are in the onion skinning mode, I don't know if you know it, but it's essentially the following. When you, are, when you enable it and you increase one frame, dr draw a new stroke, increase another frame, draw a new stroke, and repeat it several times, then you'll see that the last uh, drawn stroke is always shown here and you can control how many frames are shown there with the before and the after um, after value added here so it's very easy to define how much of your animation of your green crease pe pencil animation you'd like to see and with those two uh, color swatches here You've got the possibility to color your, to colorize your um, before and after frames. So, let's say we'd like to colorize them the before frames green, and the after frames um, pinkish. And it's, we'd like to limit it all uh, the before and the after to one frame. Then you would set it like this, and you would wonder why is it it. Um, coloring, colorizing. And that is because you didn't enable it with this uh, check, uh, check button here. And when you do that, then you see that you have colored before and after frames. So that is really a cool addition too, especially for animations. Let's now come to one of the coolest features of the new Blender Grease Pencil tool. It's now possible to edit your strokes. So let's just de disable this onion skinning and then just hit D, hold D down D and hit tab. This little icon is already exactly what you would uh, guess now. It's that proportional editing is now possible. So when you select one point on this line and you are now um, hitting O for a proportional editing and G to grab it and you can see or R to rotate it that you can easily rotate and form new um, 
grease pencils, the strokes. So it's really very easy and very cool to work with the grease pencil now. Apart from that, there are new pie menus. By holding down D and then pressing Q, you got a new pie menu that uh, has many tools available that you would need oftentimes. By holding down D and uh, pressing W, you can easily um, adjust the fill rate or the fill opacity or the stroke strength, like you can see here. And the thickness is uh, changeable here too by by DW thickness. And so you can easily access all those tools if you didn't open the uh, N bar, the properties panel here, then you can easily access them via a new Pi menu. Apart from that, there is another very cool feature and that is that it's now possible to animate those strokes and fill parameters and I think the thickness too. So if you, for example, say on this, um, on this frame, I'd like to insert a keyframe here and there and there, and I'd like to have it. Yeah, that's that's the problem. We got now <laughs> the onion skin activated, um, but we'd like to have one new keyframe here, there, and the thickness altered too. Then you can see that it's uh, changing and animating the values as we would. Uh, like to so it's now possible to animate everything and that is another very cool feature Last but not least is the new crease pencil toolbar available here and there you can find tools like the convert tool where you can convert your strokes into a path a busier curve or a polygon curve we find several selection uh, operators like select linked for example this one or uh, where you can access the tools like share there it is um, immediately and apart from that there are those modes that you already know and there that were available in the previous versions like the continuous drawing mode where you can sketch much better um, multiple strokes and the uh, data source as I explained previously and the stroke placement and apart from that I think there is much more to discover in the official documentation um, that is coming up with Blender 2.73. Uh, I hope that you had much fun in this episode of the Blender development sneak peek and my name is Thomas Beck and I hope that I see you next time. Bye!